the size of the crop harvest was predicted by the moon's position relative to a zodiac sign on the day of Sirius's heliacal rise. Since the sun moves counterclockwise relative to the stars, a star on the day of its heliacal rise is visible for a moment just before dawn. The heliacal rise of Sirius was used in Egypt to predict the beginning of the Nile's flooding. This example seems to support the opinion that dividing the ecliptic into sections of equal length may be a result of Egyptian influence. Assyria's conquest of Egypt brought these big cultures into direct contact. There were also strong ties between Chaldea and Egypt, although relations were not always friendly. In Egypt, however, the ecliptic was divided into 36 segments each holding the sun for 10 days. Three segments made up one lunar month, and also one twelfth of the ecliptic. Zodiacal astrology demanded much more of astronomy than predicting astrology had. This was the beginning of diligent moon watching and elaboration of the cycles of the planets. Knowledge emerged that could be used to indirectly calculate the position of the planets and the moon, this came in handy later in compiling birth horoscopes, since a child could also be born during the day or on a cloudy night. Horoscopic astrology appeared in Mesopotamia during the Pashan occupation. At that time, Mazdaism was predominant in Iran. According to Mazdaism, the world was created by the highest of the gods, the personification of goodness, and light Ahura Mazda. The personification of darkness, and evil Angra Mindju or Araman causes trouble in the world of humans, but will eventually be defeated. Persian influence can also be observed in the works of Greek Aethals, in the sky there are Zeus, and eleven main gods on Warshoriots, with them a heavenly army of gods, and demons followed by the souls of people preaching to them. The souls that fall down will in their earthly life follow the same gods, as they did in heaven. This indicates that the position of the planets at a child's birth determines the qualities of the soul that settles in the child's body. There seems to have been a quite practical reason for the beginning of the making of birth horoscopes, since the Persian conquerors had no need of the services of the Babylonian astrologists the astrologists had to find another way to earn a living. The Babylonian birth horoscope predicts a child's future, and character, and the course of their life from the positions of planets at the moment of birth. This was actually usually based on the moment of the beginning of sunset of the day preceding birth, since Babylonians, as many other peoples using the lunar calendar, counted the start of a day from sunset. Later, time of birth was determined within a quarter of a day, or six hours. The best-known old horoscope describes the sky on April 29, 410 BC. The text is translated as follows. Nisanu, night of the 14th, son of Umuuza, Umuadina, descendant, was born. At that time the moon was below the pincer of the scorpion, Jupiter in Pisces, Venus in Taurus, Saturn in Cancer, Mars in Gemini. Predictions tend to be general, mainly concerning character, and concrete predictions were avoided. Early horoscopes also include pseudo-horoscopic predictions mainly in connection with eclipses. If the child is born and during his infancy a solar eclipse occurs, he will die in a foreign city, and the house of his father will be scattered. As a rule, horoscopic predictions are positive. If it is predicted that a child will not become rich, a way is still found to bring becoming rich into the prediction. In time the positions of planets became increasingly important, and they were marked more precisely relative to the zodiac. In a horoscope from 235 BC, the positions of all planets are marked in relation to the zodiac to an accuracy of one degree. Planets were the most powerful element in Babylonian astrology. Horoscopes also considered the relative positions of the planets, 
especially their relation with the sun. What in Hellenic times was the teaching about the Dominatayon, and exile of planets probably started out as the Babylonian concept of a planet's secret home, the zodiac sign in which a planet is located, giving it additional influence. In Chaldean horoscopes the formation of the essential elements of astrology, except the system of houses, and the importance of the sign, which both are of later origin, can be observed well. It is true that astrology has a long history, but there is no proof in the history of Mesopotamian astrology to back up the assertions that the effects of the signs and planets were discovered during long-term observations. Instead, one can observe the combination and adjustment of birth horoscopes according to the needs of the time. A flexible interpretation develops first, and only then the rules and framework for composing a horoscope are formed. Even though astrology developed during the Hellenic period, its ideology was already formed during the Mesopotamian period, later development was rather a refinement of details. Apparently there is no reason to doubt that the modern pseudoscience of the same name is based on its antique predecessor. Many borrowed their method from astrology, for example many horoscopes were compiled that were not based on the starry sky, numerology developed, telling fortunes by cards, etc. In the first step all these disciplines use techniques that can be compared to computational or data gathering and processing techniques, and which are claimed to be scientific. In the next step the product will be interpreted prognostically, using more or less inflexible algorithms. The manner of interpreting also plays an important role. This makes ancient astrology one of the main roots, elements of scientific thinking in ancient Greek philosophy, astronomy, and cosmology. We may notice the process of mythic thinking changing in ancient Greece. The fall of the mythic world can be seen in epics. Homer uses comparison which is not a mythic, but already a poetical method. The way Homer describes the deeds of the gods, their quarrels, their amorous adventures, Homer does not raise the question of how the world came into being. Hesiod, who started systemizing gods, and Hesiod Anaximander Anaximenes Chaos Archi, a primary substance, air. Eros separation of cold and warm thickening, and thinning earth a Gaia and Tartaro's earth, and air earth, and air. Night and day the sphere of fire sky Uranus, from Gaia celestial bodies celestial bodies, from earth the mountains, seas, ocean sea, from ocean sea. Myths by describing the beginning of the world in his theogony, does that. With this the basis of the mythic world was torn apart. Hesiod's gods are connected with each other, and have somehow come into being, and have developed. His gods are personalized forces, elements of nature, and have emerged due to some historical progress. In the beginning there is chaos, which is not the absolute antithesis of order, the meaning of the word as it is used in contemporary mathematics. Comparing the understanding of Hesiod, and that of the Ionic philosophers about how the world came into being, one can see that these conceptions are very similar, the elements can be compared on a one-to-one -one basis. Hesiod takes a long step towards the philosophical way of thinking. Thales of Miletus was the first to give up the mythic interpretation of the world for the philosophic one. According to him the source of being is in reality itself, nature, not in something supernatural, something outside nature. Water is the beginning of everything, endless matter, which is in eternal movement. Everything can be formed and destroyed, but the primary substance is stable and eternal. Anaximander of Miletus did not consider any element to be primary. His primary substance is an abstract original matter, which is endless, indefinite Yuanperon Vapiron. It will be a serious mistake to take it for some primary material, of which everything is put together, as the modern man accepts, 
and understands it. The word euampeiroge in Greek means a boundless, endless, infinite, countless, etc. Secondary meaning is inexperienced, incompetent, profane. This word is in opposition to the word to piraj, which means a limit, bound, edge, border, end, etc. In his cosmology Anaximander contrasts definable with indefinable. For the Greeks to piraj was something they could understand. The word had a positive meaning compared to to euampeiron, which was something that was not understandable, that was awful and negative. Tuan Peron is the place where everything that exists resides, being at the same time an opposite to itself. It is by this that the transition from being something to negation of the same takes place, for example from cold to hot. According to Anaximander, things do not form from the qualitative change of an element but due to the separation of the opposites which is caused by eternal movement we do not know if it is possible to interpret to euampeiron as a matter if it is spatial if it is mathematically infinite but we do know that it is the indefinable indeterminable that surrounds us the existing can exist by being to piraj but its beginning and end is to Yuan Peron. The philosophy of Pythagoras is based on the concept of numbers as an ideal object. There is not much known about his cosmogony, something might have preserved through Philolaus. It may be that the idea of a spherical earth and heavenly bodies comes from Pythagoras. More important is his teaching of soul, which has been influenced by the religion of Iran and Mesopotamia, and through which the ideology that favored the astrological way of thinking started to spread in Greek culture. Heraclitus of Ephesus considers fire as the primary substance. From fire there will come water, earth, air and fire again. Fire is changing, the world is changing, and there is nothing stable in it. The idea that the earth rotates, and the principle of the temporal infinitude of the universe originate from Heraclitus. It is definitely known that Parmenides of Elia considered the earth spherical. He was the first to discover that the morning star, and the evening star were the same. Parmenides' difference between reason and mind pointed out the distinction between truth and opinion. According to his main point of view there is only one eternal existence, identical with itself, changeless, invariable, stationary, constant. Reality is a single, so thought also is student Zeno of Elia, the common sense belief in the existence of the many.